Hello all YouTubers, I am the Weather Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this weather presentation for June 29th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, I would ask that every single one of you please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications. Thank you guys so much for 600 subscribers. Let's get to our next goal of 700 subscribers and to our next long-term goal of the big 1,000. So please smash that subscribe button and ring the bell notifications as well as watching the whole video. Both of these things really do support my channel and, you know, watching the whole video, it's a win-win. You know, you, you get the best for the content and I get to watch time, which I really do need for my channel. And please also like and share this video. Thank you. Now, let's get on with today's video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a tropical disturbance that is potentially, or could potentially develop into a tropical system or even tropical depression, tropical storm, but it is a tropical disturbance that is forming off the East Coast. It does have a 20% chance of development currently. In my last video, I talked about Invest 96L over in the tropical Atlantic. If you want to watch that video after this on the top right corner of your screen, but this is a area of low pressure that is forecast to form off the southeastern coast that is developing now. Um, on Tuesday, some development could be possible later this week as it moves offshore the east coast. Um, we know that the jet stream, these storms can, these little areas of spin can break off of the jet stream and it really in turn, or they can even break off of the cold front. Sometimes the cold fronts develop, they stall, and little areas of spin can generate off of them and it can even develop into a little tropical system, tropical depression, tropical storm here. Um, but notice how development within 48 hours is 0% and 5 days is 20%. So this does have a better chance to develop over the course of four, five, six days as opposed to one or two. If you look at this system on the satellite imagery, um, as you can see, as with Invest 96L, notice how there's an X here, meaning that means that they know where the low pressure center is. As you can see with this area, it's just a broad area of yellow, meaning we don't, there's no X there, so we don't know where the low pressure center is with this other system right here. All right, we, we don't know, there's no really clear low pressure center yet. All we know is that um, a little area of chocolate, that there's that area of chocolate development in that yellow region and a chocolate system could form within that, but there's no clear low center quite yet. All right, but here we go. Here's your jet stream. All right, kind of like have like a little front, little air spin generates off of that, potentially a little area of spin. Um, if I had to say though, I would put the low pressure system sort of like back here. We do have some convection developing here, but it's really, it's moving really east southeastward, and you can see part of it is actually getting thrown back into the northeast, not that little upper level low up there. So actually, the convection is actually moving all up through New England because it's getting breaking off, or it's breaking off because of that jet stream here and that upper level low. All right, so as we as we look at our next map here, checking out the ocean temperature anomalies, uh, and as you can see, off the southeast coast, where it could potentially be developing up through the Gulf Stream, we do have some above average ocean water anomaly so that that is a perk here um water temperatures in the low 80s potentially mid 80s because it, if this does track right along the gulf stream as it's potentially forecast to that could lead to some increased development because we saw we saw a tropical system form we saw dolly form along the gulf stream earlier all right so it can definitely happen again in terms of our development chances here looking like 20 to 30 percent chance of development according to the cmc tropical cyclone genesis right there we do have a Potentially up to 30% chance of development. All right. Tropical intensity index values off the southeast coast, as you can see, we do have some favorable to even highly favorable areas for development. So maybe some increased chances for tropical development. Um, good thing, another good thing is, is that dry air for now isn't too extreme. There's some patchy areas of very low dry air, but overall off the southeast coast and the east coast, with the exception of right by the east coast. But other than that, there's really uh, not many areas of dust because the dust has moved through the southeast already. I mean, you can, you can see the dust right here. It's already moving through the Caribbean. We have another massive plume that's coming off the coast of Africa here. But luckily, dry air isn't, isn't too significant right now, and that would obviously increase the chance for development the lower dry air we have. But the thing about the storms when they develop off the east coast is that they don't have too much oceanic heat content. As you can see for the North Atlantic, there is no oceanic heat content, but because the storm is forming along the Gulf Stream, all right, you can see the Gulf Stream does have, we're talking about 2550 in terms of the OHC values. So because it's forming, forming along the Gulf Stream, that does give a little bit more heat energy into it. But 
other than that, there's not much heat content in this area as opposed to, you know, off the coast of Africa where 96L is or the Caribbean. That's where your real oceanic heat content is. All right. Um, if you look at the wind shear values, that's that's a problem. Just like with 96L, wind shear is going to be a problem for this tropical disturbance as well. I mean, here you go. Off the southeast coast, there's a little area of low wind shear, but all around it. Because of that jet stream that we have forming here, or jet stream that's coming through, it, the wind shear values are really increasing, and obviously that, that just really inhibits development. So, And the slow could break off, a little low that could break off, move off the southeast coast, and then potentially move up this way. But like I said, we've seen it before. Dolly formed for a very short while uh, from pretty much from doing the same exact thing. So this storm could potentially develop. If we look at the um, the uh, precipitation here and the precipitation rates, like the rainfall rates, as you can see, like I showed you guys before, all right, here's that low pressure system that's moved to New England. Got that little jet stream taking it with it. Kind of helped to move that low out. But notice what happens here. All right, notice how it's just, it pretty much is just a draped area of precipitation. It doesn't look like much now. Keep in mind, it's 84 hours out. But take a look at what happens here. Once you notice right about here. Notice we have a little low center that develops right here. So could that potentially be the storm? It could be. But like I said, both of these systems, 96L, like I talked about in my previous video, and this tropical disturbance here, it's not an invest yet. Um, both have lower chances of development, but that does not mean that they can't develop. I'm just saying the development chances are currently on the lower side. If we look at the uh, sustained winds, do we have potentially some tropical storm force winds? Um, the answer to that is probably going to be no. However, notice we do have some tropical storm force winds from this little low pressure system right here. So that could potentially be about, I think our main low is sitting right about here. So along this area of elongated shower and thunderstorm activity, because these some tropical storm force winds, some isolated patches of tropical storm force winds. So, but I think this tropical disturbance would probably be subtropical if it does develop it could be tropical but i think it does have a good chance to be subtropical as well um if we look at the geopotential heights here 850 millibar geopotential heights and no cyclonic vorticity values again here's your other low pressure system sitting here but we, what we want to watch for is a load that could spawn off of this frontal system here and you can see there it is all right it's a little area of spin it's a strong area of spin but it's very tiny that's that's these these areas of spin are usually very tiny they're not too big um and tiny low pressure systems, tiny tropical cyclones, they can form a lot faster if the conditions are right, but they can also die a lot faster if the conditions aren't right. So you're, it, the storm is really taking a risk when it's small. At least when it's bigger, um, it you know it can really help to block out that shear. It can help to block out that dry air, but it can also develop a lot slower. And it means it can maintain its strength a lot better. All right, so we're going to be watching this little area of spin that moves off the eastern seaboard here over the next few days. If you look at the wind shear anomalies, again, this is GFS model first, and we'll be looking at the GEM model. That's an density thing, too. The wind shear anomalies are a little bit above average, um, potentially by 10, 20 knots. So that's a con, but we do have some pros here. We do have some, we have a little bit of heat content. We got some warmer ocean water. Dry air isn't too extreme. All right, so we do have, you know, some pros, and we do have some cons, but I can guess this as well. What's happening with the steering is, again, like I showed you with 96, in the 96L video, Here's our high pressure system. It actually can help to steer these all these low pressure systems out to sea this way, towards Greenland and towards Europe. All right. So let's take a look at the GEM model now. And as you can see, there's a little low off the northeast coast. But take a look at this. Ah, pretty interesting. An actual low pressure system, an actual surface load does form right there at 1,012 millibars of pressure, um, according to the GEM model. And it could even intensify a little bit, really get some more really getting some energy in there but actually let me actually if i can zoom into the western atlantic that might help yeah you can you can't really see it but there it is right there um it's it's a more again again this is a very tiny system but these tinier systems can really form but they can also really die faster as well so let's take a look at the gem model here take a look at those surface winds as you can see that low pressure does form in boom right there i don't know if you guys can see it there's a little area of green and there's your tropical storm that forms right there within 84 hours. So GEM model is saying we could develop a tropical storm system. On this map right here, I showed you guys 20 to 30% chance of development. If you look at the cyclonic vorticity values, all right, again, looks pretty intense to me. All right, it's a very tiny area of red and dark red, but it's there. 
right? So there's your little tropical system, potentially a subtropical system. If the wind shear value is a little bit too high, it's going to be more of a, you know, more of a subtropical storm as opposed to a tropical storm. But also our wind shear values are a little bit above average. But that's usually what happens in this time of year in the northern Atlantic. So we're going to have to watch for development. I am very sorry about that, guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweller Dude, signing off. Till next time, catch you guys next video.